going live. This Hangout IR is live. Oh, the next meeting is starting now, apparently. And, and then it goes to live, so there, there we go. So we, we are absolutely live. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> Jeremy Johnson uh, here, here in uh, southwest Michigan, and this is Brew You Episode 29. With me, as always, is my lovely co-host, Justin Levesque. Reporting from the very snowy wonderland of Lake Odessa. Wonderland, that's a great word for it. Well, you know, it's nice, though. The roads are actually plowed better than they are in downtown Detroit, or downtown Grand Rapids, so. Downtown Detroit? Is that right? Yeah, I was just, just there. Like, that's sort of close actually. to that? Yeah, kind of, sort of. They're, like, here's... What, what were you doing in Detroit? I'm just kidding. I was actually lying. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I mean, you had a, a photography gig. No, I'm kidding. An Instagram I'm gig. Cool. Well, if this is your first time uh, joining us here on Brew You, uh, here's the format. We have a couple beers. We're going to drink them. We're going to review them. And that's it. And uh, we're going to rate them, of course, on a scale 1 to 10. And uh, then we'll go on to talk about other crap that interests us or kills the time. So. And if they are no good, we kill them. But we don't tell you that. We're just kidding. Unless they are moose and squirrel. We're just kidding. Yes. <laughs> All right, so tonight uh, I will be drinking and reviewing Right Brain Brewery's Spinal Tapper. I do enjoy the label art on that one. Um, I looked at it on the shelf, and it was hard not to pick up. It's, it's pretty lovely, isn't it? It's got that nice spine and a woodpecker, I guess. It's kind of uh, Poish. Yeah. Poish. It's so po. It's Poish. 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 How about you? What are you drinking tonight? I will also be doing Right Brain. And I'm doing their Firestarter Chipotle Peppers, Chipotle Pepper Porter beer. Nice. Which, uh, actually, I think you reviewed um, way back when. I did, yeah. I was checking the uh, the list here. It looks like I, w I did that back in uh, episode... Where is it? I can't find it now. Oh, there's episode two. So our wow. second episode. Oh, this was uh, back in June. Wow, we've been doing it for that long. Hey, you're missing your uh, lower thirds too, by the way. How is that possible? I think it just jumped out. How is it possible? How is that possible? All right. It's a trap. So um, I don't know much about this beer. I, I only got it because it was an IPA, 7.5%. Uh, uh, beyond that, I don't really know much about it. Um, it says Calypso Hops. Um it's a West Coast uh, hop, so it's going to be, I'm hoping, a little close to the style that I like, hop slam and stone and all those kinds of great beers. Wood moose and squirrel. <laughs> oh, seriously, dude? No. That, so, that's Jay how it just, uh, it must have, they must have just went through another change. Yeah. Because I, that's not how it was in there before. Oh, yeah, you, yours is completely different now. You might yeah, have to reload so that. We'll, we'll configure that in the next. Okay, cool. Uh, so Jason has a uh, question. Uh, would Moose and Squirrel taste better than Crime? According to Cicil Siciliano's, it would. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Siciliano's is a uh, party store, beer store. Uh, in uh, I'm not sure. Is that is it Walker? Maybe Walker. Uh, close by there. And uh, they have a pretty good variety of stuff. Um, I would definitely differ on their opinion of crime. And, but I've heard lots of mixed reviews on crime anyway. So all I know is I enjoyed my bottle. It was really delicious. So I and urge I hear, you to try it for yourself. I hear crime's just bad for morale anyway. <laughs> and illegal in some states. Yes, crime yeah. I hear is illegal in some states. So, um, anyways, so back to this. I think uh, I think I'm gonna really like this. I, I hope I do. Uh, right brain can be good good stuff occasionally. Um, That's so also really my concern. Yeah, it will. You know, the, the, what you're drinking, I think, is is going is going to really appeal to your taste because oh, you, definitely. you do like hot stuff. You do you do tend to like porters a little bit. Um, and this one's a, this one's pretty good actually, because if I recall back six months ago, seven months ago, eight months ago, um, <laughs> it's it, amazing uh, you can remember back like five right? minutes ago, let alone. Yeah, like, I can't actually. Eight I, months I, ago, I remember it was. Eight months is fine, but five minutes, no. 
Um, but I, I, if I remember correctly, the porter wasn't that sticky sweet. They, they do another sort of stouter porter that it really is, and I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. But anyways, so I'm excited to see what you uh, think of that. So should we crack these open and get them in the glass? Yes, I'm ready to crack glass. All right, crack away, <laughs> Natasha. Not too much Olympic coverage from John Stewart. So, <laughs> oh, that's right. You want to be a Russian businessman now, don't you? That is true. I would go, like much, very much, to be. Go go to uh, the Olympic Village, like on the Onion News Network. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. Well, this definitely looks familiar. Go, 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 go. Wow. Monster head. All right. So I've got a easily a three-finger head going on this puppy. Um, it is that beautiful, um, almost amber, but it's more golden. Uh, it's a, a little very bit of a haze. There. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it great? Yes. The it's very that got that sort of soapy. You can you can kind of see it there. Uh, or at least maybe it could have back before my video cut out. Can you, can you still see me? Yep. Okay. You are still there. Yeah. On my side, it doesn't show. But uh, yeah, anyways, man. real soapy head, uh, real thick. Looks fantastic. Yeah, which I'm going to keep on <laughs> being jealous of. Uh, you know, it just makes everything look pretty, really. <laughs> you could probably pour PBR in that. But I Not that I would do that to that. No, I wouldn't do that to that chalice. Well, this had about a two-finger head, but it's already dissipated. Not a lot of lacing. And kind of like a mocha brown leaning towards black. Yeah. yeah. Kind of what well, I'm expecting from A, a porter, and B, a spice porter. So. What's the... Um, does your bottle have a born-on date? It does... Um, it is January 2nd, so this is... Wow, pretty fresh then. Yep, just like that Trapella I had last night from uh, Brewery Vivant, just canned yesterday. Oh, that's right. Or, well, sorry, the day before, the, the previous night, and I had it last night. It, it's crazy how much the difference it makes and how fresh things are. Oh, I, well, the, I think we've you just, know, learned that on the Stone and Joy by... Oh, definitely. Fresh My mom is definitely better. Actually, I'm, I'm, about that today. I'm a little worried because uh, it says uh, September. Oh, so it does. September 5th. So I don't know, but I mean, it smells great. <clears throat> you do the whole smelling thing. Yeah, I'm getting really uh, soap suds. Is what I smell. It's sort of like that borax. Soap suddy kind of. So not a simple it. green clean. No, clean no, I'm not smell. getting. I'm not really getting citrus. I'm not getting um, any of the sort of hop uh, characteristics that I would expect. No real floral. I mean, maybe, maybe like, you know, sort of like fresh linen with daisies or something. I don't know. It's a just slightly floral. Well, as you can expect, I mean, it's just what the label says, it's uh, sweet, spicy, and you can smell the heat. Definitely Chipotle right off the top. Like it, right when I was pouring it, I could smell quite a bit of it. Um, and yeah, it's a little bit smoky. Mostly just that Chipotle is really, really there. Nice. I'm excited. We just had a spicy mac and cheese for uh mm. for dinner again tonight. You know the kind that I brought to your Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jalapenos and bacon. Oh, very nice. We had uh uh I brought home Bilbo's for cuz Juliet and I really love Bilbo's. And the uh, Bilbo's had a special thing where they were doing heart-shaped pizzas, so I got one that was um heart heart-shaped very small with uh the Dragon's Feast. And uh, so it has like four different meats on it or something, you know. 
So it, it, that was really good. And of course, some uh, Hobbit sticks that were whole wheat and dill sauce. And then we, we have some smoked wings, too, that are sort of cooling on the back porch. Um, so Is their menu all based off of Lord of the Rings? Hobbit. Yeah, yeah. They they typically they name a lot of their stuff uh, directly from uh, Lord of the Rings stuff, uh, thing. So, um, Smoglifter, just a. Uh, yep, that's they have the a, name of that from Brash that I was looking at on the shelf too. Smoglifter. Yeah, yeah that's a uh, Brash uh, that. beer that I almost picked up. Yep. That's the I, chocolate, uh, the chocolate milk stout. Yeah, it's funny because the one the one we had tonight was called Dragon's Feast. Okay. But I'm, I'm damn sure they have something on there that says smog something too. So it is a a smog. Uh, smog. Yeah, but I can't remember if they if they removed that due to legalities or something. I'll have to double check, but I think it's still there. So, but that that was really nice. And then I went to Boone's Airs, uh, which is just down from my work, and picked up a couple pastries for dessert for later tonight. Uh, they they were they are a bakery who did our wedding cake back in the day. Oh, and they're still uh still open. Yep, big time. They're very popular, and we've never really had any uh, pastries like that. I mean, it's really really just excellent stuff. So, well, ready to dig in? Yeah, let's do it, man. Cheers. Cheers. Well, uh, definitely an IPA. Uh, its bitterness is really uh, right at the front. There's a very full, creamy mouthfeel. Uh, none of the sweetness, citrus, um, n none of that really big floral stuff. It's just got a really uh, deep green bitterness. I mean, almost like a radicchio lettuce kind of thing going on. Uh, it reminds me quite a lot of North Peaks. That's ex immediately who I th thought of when I tasted it. Um, so it reminds me of uh, North Peak Vicious. Ah, uh, delicious. Right? It's, it, it really is. I, I think Vicious is maybe slightly sweeter. Um, th this puppy clocks in at uh, 7.6, I believe, um, whereas Vicious, I think, is uh, 6, 6, 6, 6, something like that. I always get those. There's two IPAs they do. One, one is the Michigan Hop one. I can't remember what that's called. And one's the Vicious. I, I can't. I, I always get those two confused. But because they're because they're so dang close. But this one tastes more like the Vicious, I believe. It, it just very creamy, very bitter, uh, vegetative uh, taste. Um, really coats the tongue. You get all that. Sandpaper quality, your taste buds just flatten right out, and uh, no sweetness at all. A um, little bit of alcohol aftertaste. Uh, you can certainly smell the esters, the alcoholness coming off the uh, the nose. That's what I mistook as soap suds. Um, so my first impressions. Hmm. How about you? Um, it's a lot less. It's a lot more subdued than I thought from this from the. Smell. Um, Chipotle is evident, but it's not overpowering until like the very end. It's like it hits you after you like it's not uh, hits you right at the very end. Um, it's not nearly as uh, much of a punch as I thought it was going to be. Um, <clears throat> but it's very smoky. It's very watery, actually. Um, it's that smokiness. Um, just uh, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily satisfying. It's a little bit watery for me. I want more of a, more of a like this is a very light body. It just I feel like I'll, if it wasn't for the spice that was in this, I feel like I would just chug it right down without thinking about it. But it's very light, it's very airy, and not incredibly carbonated. So it actually, almost tastes flat. Yeah, that's you know that's one of my major complaints about porters, is that. Uh, because it is sort of that malt and roasty, toasty kind of thing going on, that uh, it is pretty flat. There's very little carbonation. Um, it, but, 
you know, in doing research on porters and why I dislike them so much, I really think once upon a time I sort of got porters um, mixed up with imperial stouts and Scottish ales, and I sort of classified them as that. Whereas really porter is more of a a lighter bodied, even though it looks deep and dark. Right. It, it was always meant to be a sort of lighter bodied style. Um, and that's where you get that sort of, you know, and, and, and porters were meant to be drank, uh, you know, very, very um, consistently, um, almost like a sessionable beer. Um, ah, that makes sense. Yeah. Although I'm, I guess I'm confused with um, a lot of porters I see end up being higher percentage than 5.6. Well, but it, is that like really the case? Heavier though. than, or at least. I mean, that, that, that's my perception is that porters are generally higher alcohol, but I mean yours is at five point eight. Uh, I guess there was a Baltic porter, but that that's that's a different classification. I think porters in general do run on the lower side, um, really because I think it's a, an English style, uh, and and those do tend to be a little less um, alcohol, usually between four and six percent. Right in that neighborhood. Hmm. So somewhere, you know, we got the impression that porters were, you know, these big, deep, dark beers, and I don't really think that's the case. No, the more that I'm drinking them, the more I'm noticing that they just don't have the punch that I'm looking for. And really, it's what's happening too with this is since it seems so watery, that spice just seems kind of watered out. Like, it seems very, like, it seems like it's there. Kind of like, um, if you make, uh, if you make hot chocolate with too little, like, with just a little bit of powder, it tastes like water with chocolate powder instead of, like, a chocolatey, like, hot chocolate. Yep. And I feel like they, this has, like, a dabble of ingredients in it that you can kind of taste, but mostly. Well, I'll, I'll be happy to go on record right now and say that porters are the Merlots of beer. Okay, fair enough. You you heard it here first. Porter is the Merlot of beer. <laughs> mm. I will say, however, that the sweetness is knocked back because of the fact that it's more watery, which I'm actually enjoying that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Although it can be seen as... Yeah, but the fact that it's watered down is not so like thick and sappy. So. Yep. Well, that's good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, I think too, you know, because we have grown um, and become more jaded, our taste buds are a little bit more jaded because of IPAs and double IPAs and 10% and 12%, you know, beers, uh, and, and ruined by hops, really. Um, yeah, pretty much. You know, I, it, when you go back to a beer like that, it it tends to fall short of your expectations or or cravings, really. I think um, I, it'd be really tough for me to go back to a porter, other than you know this show. Like I would, I'm always willing to, you know, try something brand new, um, and hope hope for the best, and and occasionally find something fun, but. The, uh, um, I th I, th I think, uh, but in my daily life, I'm not going to be drinking those on a regular basis. So. And I mean, we've been out enough for drinks, and yeah. it's not really the first thing to pour on the menu either, as far as porters are concerned. Well, Jason has another question here. Obviously, would you find porters more or less Merlot than Black IPA? So I think you know the answer to that. That's a redundant question, sir. That's rhetorical. Obviously, uh, porters are way more Merlot than black IPAs. You'd agree, wouldn't you? I agree. <laughs> we like we like black IPAs. Uh, I do. I do say I do agree that they're not as flavorful or or uh, as f forward and bold as as just a nice IPA or. Uh, it is that roasty toasty that sort of calms down the hops, but it's still there, and I like that mix. I find that kind of thrilling um, to some degree because it it seems so weird, and I I, I like weird. 
as do I. But yeah. I also have to say that uh, there's a black IPA um, from oh Pond Juice that actually is bold and so not Merlot, and uh, I thoroughly enjoy that. That'll that one sticks out in my mind. So. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's wrap this up and give up give our one last taste and and uh, give our rating. Well, I'll go first. Mm -hmm. sure. Um, what to say? I had not been the most like. Um, I'm going to start off with a score and I'm going to go with a 6 out of 10 um, it's not necessarily anything that I'll go for really on the shelf I think it was more drawn in by the fact that it was spicy which I enjoyed the whole late in this and it's just too watered down for my uh, I guess for my taste <laughs> nice um, but nonetheless it's smoky it's um very drinkable, um, and as far as porters are concerned, I think it stands up very well. But just not necessarily what I look for on the shelf. So, fair enough. Okay. Well, um, obviously, Spinal Tapper is something that is in my wheelhouse. Um, I'm really digging the bitterness. I, I, the, there is that lingering soap sudsy kind of sensation that's. A little disconcerting, but I can forgive it because it does have a lovely, luscious, velvety mouthfeel. Um, and it does have that just deep, dark, bitter, almost like a black IPA. No. Um, uh, just just the hops that are, you know, very overwhelming. Um, it, it, it tastes like a very pure um, IPA. It's not quite a double IPA. At seven point something, it's just right in the top top tier of IPAs. It's 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 very good. I like it quite a lot. Um, and I would say, I can't remember what I paid for this, but I don't think there's a sticker on it. But it, you know, I, I think of I paid seven dollars and something for the enjoy buys, and if I paid any more than that for this, I would probably shoot myself because <laughs> why would you why why would you um, but it's quite good and and I I would I'm gonna give it I I feels bad to give it a seven so I got, I'm gonna give it an eight I think I think it's quite lovely it given a choice between this and vicious I'm probably gonna go vicious I think it has uh, just I don't know more character um, it, it has a much creamier mouthfeel. This is pretty dang close, but th this is 7.6 uh, or yeah, 7.7.5, and whereas uh, Vicious is six points, so you can have an extra one, you know. So I, I mean, it's I'm gonna give it an eight. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the high alcohol is maybe preferable, preferable to some, but you know, it's I don't know, I don't know. I, I prefer the North Peak. Fair enough. But th this is this is quite good. Yeah, so to wrap it up, that's a six for Firestarters Pull Apart by Right Brain. All right, and it is Spinal Tapper at an eight out of ten for me. So, all right, that's going to do it for the beer portion of our show. Um, if you want to stick around, we'll do a little uh, Q and A and poke and trolls and. Uh, <laughs> and hopefully maybe invite some people into the conversation. Um, so I'll be sending out some links here in a minute. But uh, otherwise, I uh, hope you guys enjoy the show. Make sure to show like a scribe somewhere. And uh, we'll, we'll try to broadcast uh, Friday nights at 8 o'clock. Seems to be the the uh, the most agreeable to folks. Uh, I sent out a, a quick uh, question uh a few days ago, about a week ago, just to kind of see if you have a preference to when you think we should be broadcasting, please let us know. We'll try to uh, accommodate as much as we can. But until next time, brew you, brew you, sir. Brew All right, you. And don't forget to on YouTube. So if you can't make those time, then 
then who cares? That's yeah. Better. All right. So let me uh, zap out a quick doohickey here to to Jay if he wants to join. I'll just uh, compose an email. Jason. Cook. Bing bonk. So, uh, how how did you spend your Valentine's Day? I made breakfast, and uh, I came home and had mac and cheese. I'm doing the show with the right brain, and I'm starting to watch House of Cards season two. <laughs> so, well, let's let's, 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 let's let's talk about that because uh, Juliet and I just watched the first two episodes. Of the um, first or second season, mm-hmm. I just finished the. Yeah, I'm I'm like halfway through. I think the third episode. So. No. Uh, oh, on season two, you are. Yeah. Yeah. So did did you do the same thing as I did at the very end of the first uh, episode? I'm not sure. I I believe I screamed out, "Holy fuck!" <laughs> More or less, I. For a moment, I forgot about his John Cusack fourth uh, fourth wall <laughs> talks because he hadn't done it in the entire episode. So I was like, oh, maybe they just kind of thought it didn't work or something. But then when he goes, you think I forgot about you? Like, ah, ah, there's... Um, so yeah, it was, uh, I think I was more than what happened in the in, no spoilers, but in the second episode, that yeah. really kind of just wasn't expecting it at all. Some yeah. TV shows are not quite that bold, and yeah, this one is right. This just, that, it was who cares? Good. Like, we're moving on. We're moving yep. forward. Yep, I was, so I was uh, very impressed with that choice. As much as I liked, yeah, without giving any details away. Yes, right? yes. As much as I liked certain the event, you know, people <laughs> or things. Uh, that's too bad. But yeah, uh, it's got a it's got a great start in the first two episodes. Mo is um, Mo is it's always the first couple episodes into a new series or like a, a new season that makes you wonder if you want to go through and watch the entire thing. The answer is yes, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they've got hooked already on those. I was hooked for the first episode, and the second didn't disappoint. So yeah. I'm very excited to see what else the show has to. I mean, it seems I know. it's going to be hard to going. follow through it. It's like it seems just dangerous and a mockery of real tel- or like regular television shows. Like, yeah, this is what you could have, but uh, you don't, and you won't. Yeah, you you could have nudity. You could have you know <laughs> violence <laughs> and fought. deception and, and could, yeah, all the stuff. But no, we just tone it down. Yeah. Well. The, um, yeah, you know, please the masses, right? Indeed, I started the new season of following as well recently. Uh, speaking of uh, inappropriate, not safe for work stuff, have you seen the uh, trailer for Scarlett Johansson's Under the Skin? I have not, but that sounds amazing already. You might want to check that out. It's supposed to be kind of a uh, a mind fuck, so. I'd say watch that during the show, but yeah, right. I just, you know, I might need to. <laughs> you might need a Kleenex. Yeah, and my beer might get warm, and just that'd be that'd be bad, yeah. But so I jumped in to see a Lego, um, the Lego yeah, movie. I saw I saw your thing. Wow, I was just, I was blown away. Yeah, it really is it has the whole package, like a lot of great. Hey, look at that. Welcome, Jason Cook. Welcome, welcome. Great to be here. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Hi, Carla. Hello, Carla. Jason, are you going to go out to see the Lego movie? Uh, tempting, but uh, probably not. I've <laughs> not seen a movie since, uh, I believe, Finding Nemo. <laughs> it's been a while. A little bit. Not a movie in the theater, at least. Right. He went out on a high note. Finding Nemo, that's it, I'm done. Like, we don't need to watch any more movies. We've watched Finding Nemo. 
you will never find a greater film. Not even Monument Men with uh, that luscious cast. I want to see that. I did too. Yeah, that was it. Was either Lego Movie or Monument Men, and sadly, I chose. Well, not so sadly, because like I said, Lego Movie, five out of five. Just it's way more than I expected, and I saw a lot of uh, a lot of posts about it right before I saw it, and everyone just said it's the most unexpected movie they've seen in a while, and it's very true. Nice. Hey Jay, what, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, little some some at the moment. Nice. Ah, lovely. That was the first thing I could grab. I've already been through a let's see a Lagunitas Cappuccino Stout earlier. Mm. Okay. A uh, Belgian Double West Mall Belgian Double. Uh, yeah, we're on beer four or five at this point. I'm not sure which now. <laughs> well, you know, it is well, Le Freak from Green Flash. Ooh, is that good? Uh, it was underwhelming. Okay. Liked Carla liked it a lot, but I I was <laughs> underwhelmed. Why don't you just chime in? I liked it with everything he says that you can't quite hear. Just say something off the wall. I liked it. <laughs> I'm wearing shorts currently that have a hole in the crotch. I'm not a big fan. Let's <laughs> say chat roulette, buddy. <laughs> it's All right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, you definitely got to check out that Scarlett Johansson thing if you, if you dig... Dig weird movies. It's it's she plays an alien more or less. I don't know what this is. She is kind of alien anyways. Hey, how goddess like she is. Ah uh, yeah. Absolutely. Is that is that Mario? It's Dolly Cat. Baby. It's shoulder cat time. Yeah. <laughs> so are they gonna show like under her skin then? Because that I mean uh, well it's I saw, I saw over her skin in the beginning of uh, Lost in Translation. Yeah. You know the opening credits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's gonna be weird. It's supposed to be a really kind of like a surreal film, um, but it's we we know that she plays an alien who takes over the body of Scarlett Johansson, and so it should be an interesting thing. Yeah, definitely. So, how about you? Yeah. Seen anything uh, new lately? Army of Frankenstein or anything? I watched Ender's Game last night, I will be proud to say. No, two nights ago. How'd you like it? Honestly, better than I thought. Um, in a pure sci-fi, good effects, it was, it was a good movie. Yeah. It wasn't I, like I, or anything, but it was a good movie. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I read the books. Um, jo John Mennell gave me the books way back when, about ten years ago. And uh, I didn't... Uh, I didn't read science fiction anymore because I moved a long time ago to more to horror and that kind of thing. And uh, but but I really got sucked into those books. I really enjoyed them. And uh, I I went with my brother, I think uh, Brian. Hey Brian. Uh, and and saw the Ender's Game movie. I I only remembered a little bit of the of the plot. It all sort of came back as we were, and I thought it stayed pretty true to the source material. And I thought, as a movie, it worked really well, except for the end sequence. I didn't really like that too much. No, that that went a bit off the him meeting up with the ant, and yeah, it, it did kind of go off the rails. I thought. Yeah, I know they're yeah, trying I think to. They did a good job of it being like kind of a deeper. Oh, by the way, you thought you were playing a game, and as we give a spoiler alert, but you yeah. thought you were playing a game, and by the way, you just destroyed an entire planet. <laughs> Did, did you see that coming, not having read the book? I, I did as it was kind of unfolding, yeah. I mean, it, it did seem, it was real easy to believe. But yeah. I know I'd never read the book, so. But yeah, then at the end, the whole, oh, by the way, I'm an admiral, I'm going to go save the ant species now, that was just kind of, what's that got to do with anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a trilogy, I think, so. You know, yeah, I don't think they got enough that. enough dollars to do a sequel on that one. <laughs> That's true. I, I wonder what that did in box office. I'm curious. Because I, I think it did sort of tickle most... Uh... Oh, it does say box office bomb, so that's not good. Well, box the CGI budget had to be in the... <laughs> It had to be a hundred million. <laughs> well, yeah, it uh, it did worldwide uh, hundred and twelve million 
Um, it, it didn't pay for itself. Yeah, I wonder what the budget was. I can look that up too. Orson Corp. No more terrible CGI monkeys. I want real CGI this time. Well, how, mu how much did they pay for Harrison Ford for fuck's sake? Yeah. About two. Oh, yep. Yeah, budget was 110 mil. Box office was 112. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Whoa, oh, yep. There's probably not going to be a sequel to that one. That really was the end game. Oh, wah, 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 wah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They should have poured black IPA at the end of the movie. <laughs> no. Okay, so Siciliano's was quite scared of the crime because they had it on the, the shelf, and I instantly walked in. I said, well, I'm going to need a bottle of that. And they said, are you sure you really want to do that? Well, it, it it's no joke. I mean, it's it's spicy. Well, yeah, they, they seemed to think it was worse than, uh, they're worse than Spite. Well, it is worse than Spite. It is for sure worse than Spite. Yeah. Um, but it's, I mean, but it's it's still a taste. It has enough of the of the malt to offset that. I mean, you saw my review, and it's it's good. And and I mentioned your review. I said a friend of mine gave it a nine out of ten, and they said, they seemed to frown upon you at that moment. <laughs> and not just one cashier, but I think all four people that were working at Siciliano's this afternoon went, no, no, don't do it. <laughs> That's that's surprising. I mean, that usually there'd be somebody there who would have it dug it. Too spicy, or don't do it because it's not a good beer. Both, and, and these were heavily bearded hipster Siciliano employees, uh. not just the girls that work at Siciliano's. So, <laughs> and as we all know, they are the condescending beer gods of, of Michigan. Oh, exactly right. Yeah. Well, that then that's part of the thing too. Is like, you know, it's a stone beer, so they're probably like, well, we can, you know. We can do better than that here in Michigan, but honestly, they can't. I, I would I would be really surprised if I could find that sort of level of expertise and 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 to take a style that's so sort of radical and make it palatable and make it sort of complete was kind of mind-boggling for me. I I totally expected to hate it because number one, I've had a really good streak of stone beers. And I, you know, something's gonna fail someplace, and uh, it was just not, you know, it was, I, it was so extreme that I thought I'm not gonna like this. I figured I was gonna end up pouring it out actually, but it, the more I drank it, just the better and better it got. So, but you, but you love pepper beers. I, I do, I do. You Absolutely. got giggly when I told you about the uh, the spite wood wood aged on tap. And... Well, yes, but in my defense, I'd been drinking most of the day. <laughs> Still, and you were giggly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not true any other day. Uh, wow, you know. I, plus, I mean, uh, I like I like spite. And if you if you're gonna put that in bourbon barrels or whatever, I mean. Oh yeah, wow. definitely. I'm all about it. I'm in. Sure. On a note for founders, did you see that they opened up a KBS website today just yep. so they can crash their normal site? <laughs> please please go to kbsweek.com. Don't yeah. go to our site. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I did see that. Yeah, they're, they're trying to, you know, I, I wonder, are they really going to be up in the production like they said they would? I, I'm sure they've upped it as much as they can. What I thought was funny was how much did the list of restaurants that are going to be tapping it ahead of time, how much did you have to buy off founders to do that? Because you basically guaranteed, I mean, Pepino's, I mean, places you wouldn't go for beer normally. Well, Pepino's don't count as a decent place. And you're going to be packed the day that you say, okay, we're going to have... We're gonna have KBS before Founders puts it on their taps. Mm -hmm. So for a week, you're guaranteed to be slammed with business. Yeah. So how did you get on that list? Because <laughs> it's not a traditional list of places you would go for a good beer. Right. Right. <laughs> well, it, it, it's it's. Uh, I mean, Stone is doing the exact same thing, or, or they they probably pioneered this sort of process. Like, how in the hell did they get uh, enjoy it by? To, to like all these outlets at really relatively decent prices and had it on tap at at least three bars here in St. Joe. Mm -hmm. it, it, to me, it's like, holy crap, they've sort of blown up. Their distribution's gone crazy. Well, they must be, you know, just cranking out the kegs. And, and I think Founders, too, is doing the same sort of thing. 
Um, was that on tap anywhere in Grand Rapids? Uh, uh, enjoy by? Yeah. Yes, it was. Um, well, I used that that Stone Beer Finder, and they, it you can plug in a particular beer, and it'll tell you who sells it by the bottle and who has it on tap. And uh, it was uh, Logan's. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yep, they had it, and he, she said that they blew out of it in two days. Wow. I liked it. I liked it more than Jay did. It is my favorite beer. I thought it was. I thought it was a very good beer. I just wouldn't be nailed to a cross for it. Right? Sure. <laughs> well, I wouldn't either. <laughs> well, I'm not. So well, sure. no, let, wait, hang on a sec. Let me think about that. <laughs> what about the yeah. one over here? This this one. Yeah, that that cross over there. That that that, that one. That there creepy, you go. Creepy cross. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I don't know. I I love it. It's it's a great great beer, and I. I I, I would be happy to meet a better beer than that, at least in that style. I'm just saying, as far as a Dipa goes or an IPA, um, I'm going to go hit that every time, given the choice. So, I've been hitting a lot of Hop Slam. That seems to be on tap almost every place down here too. Yeah, they they keep coming out with more and more. They make that was a great example of let's you know publicize something. Oh, everybody wait, Hop Slam's coming out, and then every time it's gone, you walk into another store and. Oh, there's eight cases stacked. <laughs> it's all the IPA. That nobody wanted. Well, what I can't believe is I, I paid a pretty penny for a six pack down in Kalamazoo of Hop Slam, and up here now it's like cheaper than dirt. Really, it seems like it's not very, very expensive. And I I think sixteen or seventeen is as cheap as I've seen a six pack. But I I, I think Myers had them. Did, didn't you say Jay that Myers had them for like thirteen ninety nine? Yeah, um, it, yeah. Thir Myers had them for thirteen ninety nine at some point. This was weeks ago, obviously. Yeah, that's what about, yeah, definitely. Um, I think they're usually floating around sixteen or seventeen, though. Yeah, I think I picked mine up for eighteen ninety nine. Yeah, but, but that was opening yeah, day. So. Yeah. yeah, and it was in Kalamazoo, which you think would be cheaper. I don't know. Right. Be like, just walk right down the street. You know, take take the tap handle and just huh. wow, hop <laughs> slam. It's so good. It is good. But, mm. So, yeah, I was looking at some Belgian beers that uh, Liquor Cabinet has, Jay. And, you know, I don't, I, I know some of them. I, some I recognize, you know, Delirium and all that. And and then the standards like the Westfall you, you mentioned. But beyond that, I don't, I don't really know. I, I want to try them, but... I'm like I'm always like reaching for the bottle and I'm like, is that just a cheap ripoff of something? It looks so cheap. <laughs> is this a cheap ripoff of stone? <laughs> At three times the price? <laughs> yeah, right. So I'm always slightly hesitant to, to pick up so so then I then I like veer back towards the craft beers, but you know, I, I definitely want to try more of the of the Belgian rice and because I know at some point I'm gonna have to get outside of my comfort zone and and get some that are just kind of crazy. I mean, outside of Southern California. I, I know. Come on, I tried tonight. I because I was getting such flack from uh, Joel, I knew I'd have to to start mixing it up slightly. But I do have. I told Jay at the beginning of the of the broadcast before we started live that I got two bottles of the Stone uh, Matt's Burning Roasted. Roasted's uh, sitting in the fridge. They've been cooling there for a couple weeks now, and I'm like, I don't want to drink it off the show. I want, when I first try it, I want to try it on the show, but I don't want to have Joel keep busting my balls. <laughs> I saw his fanboy comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, he has a point. He's got a point. And I almost bought that today too. I kind of wish I would have. Now I picked it up and read the story at the back of the bottle. Yeah. And... We'll get it and drink along next week. So. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a great story, and it sounds like a really unusual beer. I've heard nothing but great reviews from it. Uh, it's a smoked cherry wood saison. Oh. That just sounds so nuts. That sounds amazing, though. I'm I'm really looking forward to trying it, but I I keep putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. So. Well, smoked instantly means like black IPA porter to me. So <laughs> I, I Don't listen smoke. to him. <laughs> Well, ho hopefully it's not like heavily smoked, like a German Rauchbier or anything like that. I'm hoping it's just like lightly smoked. I, it'll be interesting because I mean I've never, I, I like saisons, nice farmhouse style, right? But smoked, that you know, that 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 sounds like it could work. 
at least on paper. I also don't listen to trolls, so. Oh. <laughs> Probably can't with those big clown shoes and that big clown nose. Well, it's actually the big clown beard I'm after. Yeah. Are you going for the the Ian Bresky look? I am going for the Ian Bresky look. I mean, he's famous, so. That's right. He's the talent. Kind of my idol too, so. When, when's as the Wrecking Ball thing coming Jersey. out? Sorry. April, I think. April. Yeah. <laughs> Is it going to be like a TV spot or anything? Well, they filmed both. They did a bunch of stills that they're going to Photoshop in. Okay. And then they did do a video of him close up singing. Was he? Did they do one of him jumping on a trampoline? Like no, no, I don't think they had trampoline. No, that, that was your dream, Jay. Yeah. Well, I believe I believe he does lick a can suggestively though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, Ian. Is it a cider can? I can't wait. That's going to be so funny. Yeah, he'll blow up. He'll be uh, getting lots of hits on YouTube if they let that out. <laughs> we should have him do it live on the show. <laughs> oh, look at that. We could have a real celebrity on our show for once. Mm. Yeah, except for me and you, our ugly mugs. Yeah. I don't know. Come on. <laughs> wait, what? <I> know. <laughs> That's right. I'm sorry, your name again, miss? Ow! <laughs> Zing. That's the I would like to point out it's Valentine's Day and I'm the only one with a woman in the shot. Yes, but this I'm watching good. House of Cards. Oh. Uh, so. Yeah. So you so you're practically a woman. So you're yeah. Saying. Yeah. I'm watching Friends after this. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. The Friends marathon starts after I finish the House of Cards second season. Well, I'll be eating smoked chicken wings and watching season or uh, episode three of House of Cards. Uh-oh. Okay, so why did you wait on the chicken wings? Uh, well, because uh, we, I, I got, I went to Bilbo's and I got actually got home early, so we heated up the breadsticks first, the the Hobbit sticks, uh, ate those in the first first episode, then I heated up the pizza, the small little pizza, a little heart shaped pizza. Uh, for for the second episode, and I was going to do this show, and then after this, we'll watch another episode, and we'll heat up the wings. <laughs> so it'll be a, it's a it's like a multi course meal, you know. It's, it's a progressive a, dinner. Yeah, progressive, yes. And then of and course, he's waiting I, for the he's waiting for the dragon to fire them. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you were married to me, though, by the time you finish this show, all the wings would be gone. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, that's that was our, you know, she wanted to do it like right away too. Like, I was like, no, 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 let's just chill out, chill out. Actually, you know what? Because I, they are smoked wings. I might have to bust out that first bottle of Matt's. Don't do it. Oh, I, I, well, I don't really have much else chilled either. <laughs> so I might have to do it. I gotta bust that cherry wood. Oh, you finished your. Uh... Two fourteen fourteen. I did. I did it last night, man. How how was it? Because you did it on. It was fantastic. Right? It was just. It was Do you great. think your experience on two thirteen fourteen was better than it was on two eight or when the last time you had one? It was just. It was great every time. <laughs> I would imagine it was better than Mrs. Johnson's experience on two fifteen because I think Mr. Johnson is spent. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. I, All I, his I, love has gone to the stone beer. I, I know it. I know. Touche. It's uh, she. She understands though. She understands my. Yeah. Uh-huh. My obsession. Beerus is mistress. Mm-hmm. It is tonight. I, I don't want to hijack your guys' broadcast, but I would like to say that last night we were at Perrin Brewing, and I gave a four and a half out of five to a beer at Perrin. A brewery, oh. which I had completely written off as of, well, I hadn't been back for probably a year because the beer was so bad. And oh, the last year, the beer has been fantastic. They got a bunch what? of barrel aged stuff. Okay. Well, not even just the barrel aged stuff, but ever since they got rid of all the name high, you know, well renowned brewers, mm-hmm. one of which I I know personally, the beer has just gotten exponentially better. What? Uh... So, so have they introduced some new styles, or? Well, they have a double IPA, uh, which is very good. But then what they did is you can have that double IPA, uh, two different barrel agings. Mm-hmm. So they have what they call their anniversary ale, which is in I don't remember which barrel, 
Uh, and then they have what they call Hopwood, which is that same double IPA in a white oak, uh, same barrel they'd use for a Chardonnay. Medium charred uh, Chardonnay barrels, basically. So you can have the exact same double IPA three different ways, you know, all in the same night. That's I kind of like that. Yeah, yeah definitely. It's pretty cool. And now they just and they introduced a stout wood they called it, which is that same barrel, but now they're doing they're aging their stout in it, and that was and I'm not even a big huge stout fan, and that was fantastic. Can you do flights of flights of those beers? Yeah, you can do samplings there. Wow, I'm really happy to hear. It'd be that. nice to do a flight a uh, flight comparison of the different kind of um, barrel. Yeah. Because they have a black IPA on tap, so I'm sure you'd enjoy it anyway. <laughs> and you heard that was good, but... <laughs> yeah, I would. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's really good to hear because, um, you know, I, unlike you, I've always sort of like liked their beers. Um, some of them I found really good. Like, I, I, their grapefruit IPA I really love. But um, I, I didn't like the fact that they would just do... Here, it's the pale ale. It's the IPA. It's the porter. You know, they didn't really. There was very little variation. They stuck to those core styles and didn't really uh, move away from those any. So I'm I'm glad to hear like they're experimenting with wood barrels and kind of getting out of their comfort zone. Well, you know, I, I think they're following the founders' philosophy, which is you know what basically bankrupt founders. We need to make an, an IPA. We need to make a pale ale. We need to make a porter. And then when they figured out that, you know, everybody does that, okay, no, we're going to make Dirty Bastard. We're going to make crazy beer. Now all of a sudden people love it because it's different. But if you just want to make a good IPA, there's 8,000 IPAs. Exactly. I, do I something wondered, different. I wondered how the hell they were going to market that stuff because, and parent I'm talking about, because it, it always was like, oh, what kind of parent do you have on tap? It's a pale ale. You know, and I'm like, Okay, well, what about all those other pale ales? You know, it never never made sense to me. Like they they relied solely on the name to carry their sort of solid styles, but but beyond that, you don't seek them out for anything other than an alternative to Miller Lite or Budweiser. You know, it's like, well, I could do that, you know, standard piece of crap, or I could do this better piece of crap. You know, so I'm glad to hear that. Good. And yeah. the hummus was really good. <laughs> hummus. Yeah. It was very good. Did, did you get a corn dog and dip it in the hummus? And... No, they've upgraded their food substantially. So you get no more like, corn dogs? No. It's no think... longer food from a food truck. Oh. If people didn't know, the kitchen at Perrin was originally a food truck, literally had been parked inside the building with the wheels taken off. That was their kitchen. So you got corn dogs and deep fried food they've actually added a real kitchen so now they have burgers sandwiches food's pretty good really cool i always sort of appreciated the the side of a corn dog you can get a corn dog as a side for anything though that was always kind of fun i think they still have a corn dog <laughs> i didn't see it but i wasn't looking for it yeah, i wasn't looking either but seek out the corn dog but in the middle of nowhere that place is busy at, at four o'clock in the afternoon they're busy Oh. By 6 o'clock on a Thursday, it's packed. Yep. Where is Perrin again? Comstock Park, uh, oh, 7 okay. Mile and Alpine. Yeah, all right. So it's a destination. You're not just stumbling across it. Right. <laughs> I, I had somebody uh, talk to me a couple weeks ago, and they were like, yeah, I went to this brewery. It was like out in the middle of nowhere, and just, you know, you're driving through the countryside, and <laughs> there it is, boom. I was like, oh, it must have been Perrin. Yeah. It wasn't stone. <laughs> no, it wasn't. You can't just stumble across stone. Yeah. No, you can see the lights and the tears falling from the angel eyes. And, <laughs> and Will Wheaton at the front just waving. <laughs> Beckoning you in. <laughs> Beckoning, please come in. A bunch of overly satisfied men walking down the sidewalk <laughs> with a cigarette. That's right. And uh, lots of stiff Kleenex. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody um, else went there, not me. Yeah. I should leave this broadcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> we're not quite not safe for work, but we're fine. Oh, so what do you guys got going on this weekend? Anything fun? Nothing. Nope. Nada. Nope. I threw an invite out to your wife to see about Greenbush. When? 
Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow? What are you doing? Uh, well, let's see. Juliet's getting Searching her Searching for that elusive on. corn dog. Yeah. And, and <laughs> Searching homemade, for the corn dog. Making homemade corn dogs, if you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we, we've got a uh, dinner date tomorrow night to uh, some friends there. We're doing some Thai food. And then uh, on Sunday, we're meeting the Bushes, Joel and, and Delia. Uh, he has a bike race in Saugatuck on Sunday. And uh, we're, we're going to do lunch either up that way or he's going to come down this way on, on Sunday afternoon. So. On his bike? Yeah, well, yeah, I hope not, <laughs> with his wife on the handlebars. <laughs> I would I'm like sure to point out Saugatuck Brewing does have a couple new things out right now. I know. I stopped in there... Uh, uh, just sort of like I was traveling through one day, and uh, I won't say at what time, but uh, <laughs> it was. Uh, I, I tried uh, a couple of their. Well, no, just one actually. One one pint of something that was a little unusual, and and uh, I was really surprised. It was really dang good. I mean, I've always sort of liked them, but again, their styles can be a little pedantic. But they have just one or two things now that uh, are kind of interesting. I did pick up a sixer of their Serrano. Of course, pepper beer. <laughs> pepper beer. <laughs> you have yeah. a sombrero that you just put dude, on to drink dude, beer? I, or? I like spicy stuff. I just like spicy stuff. I, I do, do too, it. but I don't want it in my beer or my <laughs> vagina. It's, you know, places to avoid spicy stuff. You got sand in your vagina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I really enjoy that, and so that, that's actually on the list of potentials. I'm, I'm letting those guys decide where we go for for lunch. But anyways, I think Sagatuck Brewing sounds like a fantastic idea because it's not two hours from us; it's just forty minutes down the road. <laughs> yeah, well, that that's it exactly. It, it, it's only forty minutes for us, really, too. So it's and it's supposed to be decent roads on Sunday. So yeah, we're I, I'm think I'm hoping that they choose that, but we'll see. It could be the wife's choice. <laughs> but I'll, yeah. I mean, if that's something you guys want to do and and then come along and join us, then uh, I'll. Uh, uh, if that's a possibility, let me know now, and then I'll just I'll let Joel know, and I'm sure that he'd be fine with that because that's where the race is. So, we we could definitely make Sunday at Sagatuck happen. Okay, cool. Well, let, let me uh, double check with him, and I'll drop you an email tomorrow morning. Do we get to cheer at the race? Uh, I'm not even sure, like, because we're, we're not going to be at the race. Screw that. Who cares about that? <laughs> We're I want to go cheer food. and be like, pedal, pedal, yay, pedal. <laughs> Don't fall down. Don't fall down. Watch out for the ice patch. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if anyone that. else is watching, I'd feel compelled to say that we've now turned Brew You into kind of like a swingers uh, <laughs> hookup service <laughs> in the Saugatuck area. So yeah. it's a hey, it's come a on down. open swinger service, apparently. Just come on down Sunday. On Sunday. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday. Justin, bring a friend. Any kind of friend. <laughs> I'll just bring a pepper beer. Oh, maybe a clown. I'll just have a nice big bowl of bring a friend. A friend will find me. <laughs> All right. Well, I think on that note, let's uh, wrap this up, and uh, I'll send you guys an email. And uh, Jay, of course, you're welcome to join. But don't you have to work on Sunday? I do have to work on Sunday. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So that blows yeah. that. So, so why no Army of Darkness? What? Why no? Why no Army of Darkness? Well, money yeah. is it money? No. Is it a girl? Okay. No. Is it a girl though? No. <laughs> no, any girl I was with would gladly go see Army of Darkness, or right. they would hit the road. You're, you're allergic to movies? Is that yeah, it? pretty much. Okay. Just Fair from enough. the waist up. Well, I thought the whole concept of doing a brew you at Alamo Draft House would be kind of fun. I agree. But you just don't like Bruce Campbell? You don't you hate I him? I hate Bruce Campbell. You you got you got other plants. Talk about BS that. <laughs> All right. Well on that note, let's uh, wrap it up and say good night. Thanks for joining us guys. Good night. Have a good night. Kiss the cats for me. Will do. You too. All right. Adios. Bye guys. <laughs>